Yes, indeed, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the program. This is the Then and Now, and I'm your host and presenter, Prince Emil Cromer, coming to you live and direct from the United Kingdom in London. And I'm all pumped up for this program. And um, as usual, before I proceed, I will ask those that have just signed on to give me a hands up whether my, um, my audio level is good because I'm about to roll. Ladies and gentlemen, um, I'm asking you please, those of you that are just joining the chat room, if my audio level is good, can I have a thumbs up please, before we begin to roll out, because I'm all pumped up. In the meantime, let me come back again with the song that we play. My audio level is good, ladies and gentlemen, can I have a thumbs up please. Welcome to the show. Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the program. Um, I want to say a warm welcome to you all. I'm asking, okay, first thumbs up. I will take it that my sound level is good. Thank you. 
The importance of a union, especially here in the United Kingdom, where most of all dwell. So this man will be talking about union laws, the advantages and disadvantages. Mr. David Target, welcome to the house. So sometime around 9 o'clock, 9.15, we will be talking to Mr. Um, to Mr. Target. So once again, ladies and gentlemen, I welcome you all to the show, and um, I'm about to take off. Now here we are. When the candidacy of when Doctor Samora Wilson Kamara's name was announced as the flag bearer for the All People's Congress (APC). This is not arguable because it's a fact. You were there, I was there, you heard, I heard. There were mixed reactions across the entire political spectrum of the country. And that spilled over to the diaspora where a large number of us are participating in this program lives. And I repeat, when Dr. Wilson Samora Kamara's flag bearership selection was announced by the APC as a flag bearer. There were mixed reactions across the political spectrum of our country and the rest of the world for all of us who were concerned. For those of us who might not have known and I use, you know, like um, the past tense, might not have past tense continuous, might not have known, because by now we reasonably assuming that we would have known. So for those of us who did not know Dr. Samura, his ascendancy to the top was controversial, and today we're going to be speaking truth to power, because if we must arrive as a people, then we have to have these conversations, not only those that are convenient for us, because we only got to one country, and that country by, by and large has to be preserved. The sanctity of that nation has to be preserved. And for us to preserve it means that we have to have a conversation, and we have to listen to prominent people of the world, like former U.S. President Barack Hussein Obama, those who tend to win votes, by division, will find difficulties in ruling the people as a unit. So if you want to sell divisionary or you want to buy divisionary tactics just to get votes, imagine how you're going to rule a people who are divided because what you want is a people that are together. So because Dr. Samura in selection be very controversial for reasons why I will go into briefly or shortly, this song, ladies and gentlemen, okay? The slang, Yusabiam, remember that slang, which was used pejoratively and was associated with Dr. Samora, was rife all over the country. And this is what they say. These are things we, we very much vast with. That the slang associated with Dr. Samora was a song with a pool, you know, what they call um, Yusabiam. Listen to this. Okay? Maybe you will be familiar in the comments. I will just forward a quick link. 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 Now, just a song will be associated with um, Dr. Ka uh, Samura when they announce in flag bearership. That may surprise a lot of people, and the slang which was used pejoratively becomes synonymous with Dr. Samura. When you uh, you Sabian, you Sabian, yes, indeed. That question did then be actually necessary? It be actually necessary by and large was necessary because Dr. Samura himself don't admit say they not be Sabian. He be available, he be always the loom, but instead of the foreground, he was always in the background. This is not common the man, he not safe, safe. So some of the things that will make people really, really surprised was, some of the things that will make people really surprised was, this man will be the loom, big and large, now the background instead of the foreground, 
Bill Gates, 20, some more other people, 25, 26, if not 27 other people already they contest for the APC flag bearership. And you know the irony of this all, ladies and gentlemen, is this. The Constitution of the All People's Congress, which probably most people might not be familiar with, it says that anybody will want to go for that position day, okay, the flag bearership of the party, if it is not a public rule, I remember one of the candidates that may come out, you know, yeah, we hardly hear it from him anymore, that now honorable then, and Fakan. They come out, they outline everything to us. I mean, that was basic, that was ABC, make it so clear to us that if you they receive wages or the benefits for the emolument fund, public fund, the public purse, then you have to resign your position if you want to contest for the flag bearership of the party. This was clear, by and large, and everything went lawful. And one thing I want to make clear about, because these things can be contested. Ladies and gentlemen, what we need to know, thanks to you. And ladies and gentlemen, uh, they ask me, please, if at any point in time, me, me audio, let it flow well, Una, please make, make a known. Because today we want to get everything right, almost near perfect, because perfection are God no more. So at any point, where if me audio let the flow right, please, ladies and gentlemen, make it known. Again, this is the channel then and now, and I'm your presenter, Prince Emil Koma. We continue with the theme, election special, Sierra Leone decides, hashtag Sierra Leone decides. Okay, election special, hashtag Sierra Leone decides. Having said this, we also say we will profile or chronicle the life and times of them one day we want to be the leader or the leader them in our country. By virtue of them being public leaders, they are subjected to public scrutiny. Welcome, Mr. Mr. Hamilton. Um, General Kanga, welcome to the house. And Sia Kaba, welcome to the house. Again, I just to say, if my volume at any time not good, Mr. Anitri, welcome to the house. Stephen Sachs, welcome. Please make a note because I want day in the elements well at the flow. Okay, because there's a lot that we need for talk here today. Thank you. I see the thumbs up, which means again, I will take and say, my audio level is good. Thank you very much. Mr. Kouma, welcome to the house. So the irony of Dr. Samuel Kamara in flag bearership with the selector was 25, 26, 27 other candidates there. They made their position known, say they want contest for this position. Okay? And that the law call for, and they just say on the pathway, they say, not because they say that the law means that the law can't be wrong. The law itself can be wrong. It can be funny. So that it makes you a chance there for going and contest them, for rectify, you know, your whatever error go there around that or in the law itself. That's why you see amendments and etc., etc., etc. So 27 other people that if not more or less contest for that same position day. And most of the people they if not all resign their position not in the, uh, wherever they may serve in a public capacity because they make business. Some of them have very lucrative positions that you will find difficult for that person left. But as a statement of intention, these people better alpha from all the wicked vibe. Welcome to the show, my friend. Then people have a resigning position the day because they intend for contest the elections. But then, even though the party in rule says the 1995 constitution of the party, not the country, it says that if you want to contest for that position, then you can resign. Nobody will be no doctor or uh, Samura began that intention because you know express them so. Because expressing it then implied that you will get for resigning position and Dr. Samura be in a very, very prominent position. Okay? Look like there's a problem. What's the problem? Am I having a problem with the microphone, please, ladies and gentlemen? Is there a problem with the microphone? Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Testing, one, two, testing. 
Is that a problem with a, with a, with a sound? Sound check, please. Ladies and gentlemen, sound check. Sound check, ladies and gentlemen. Massa boy, welcome. <laughs> Thanks for making it to this chat room. You're highly welcome, my friend. Ladies and gentlemen, is there a problem with my sound? Sound check. Sound check. Sound check, ladies and gentlemen. We don't want, we can't afford for miss this thing today. So, dear, please, are uh, they do a sound check? Is my sound check okay, ladies and gentlemen? Sound check, please. In the meantime, we are talking about very clear now. Thank you very much, Timo. We are talking about Dr. Wilson Samura Kamara, the APC flag bearer for the 2018 national and presidential elections where they come up in a matter of weeks roughly about 30 some more days so the stake is only getting bigger and in, on this channel we'll be promising we'll chronicle everybody the candidates them at least so we don't have dr kande yumkela nancy yama Sulonte from all the way lib liberia welcome to the show my sister so we'll be not pro we'll be not profile dr kande yumkela and then after that, we'll be getting retired Brigadier Julius Bio. Today, now the ruling party, All People's Congress, flag bearer, Dr. Samura Wilson Kamara, now with the profile. And we also they look at APC, the 10 year of rule, the advantages and disadvantages, the highs and lows, the economy, which we believe, say, get for play a significant and major role because if we only grumble today, now simply because of 10 things today. Yeah, sounds like you got it on far on Springfield Stadium. Get it? <laughs> no worries at all, Massa boy. Better late than never. Thank you so much. So anyway, here we go. So we said the candidacy of Dr. Samora came as a massive surprise for a lot of people eh? because the announcement then was anybody will intend for go for that position day for resign if he did not the public if they serve the public or if they receive money for the consolidate consolidated funds and most of the people that will receive money from the consolidated funds resign one of the prominent candidates at the time um honorable um dr khan i mean alpha khan he resigned in position he go on the media and make it clear to us many a times that anybody will need for resign if they want to contest their, their position and they if you did receive money from the consolidated fund however dr samura never resigned his position okay but yet the partition fits because now that we understand we know they on the inside now they can say the law not because they say the law the law cannot be faulty of course the laws can be faulty that they, that i make there are ways for go forward for also look at the law when somebody challenger was it right can you imagine the law is being questioned whether it is right hence you see issues around dual nationality as well although it is in the constitution but yet it's been challenged because basically there are things around these things that can make them very very wrong okay so however dr samura i'm so welcome to the house my friend dr samura now is the candidate of the apc so no one dwell too much on the procedure how he became we just touch on him a bit because then he was an unknown quantity in the public domain don't mean say not in a loop large but more in the background than in the foreground so dr samura now as a candidate for the election is what we talk about so it's no longer you sabia we now know say we sabia not so we all go agree say we sabia so all the 27 candidates there also will be also equally contest for that position day. Of course, now one person nine they win. And for win, means say somebody get for lose. So Dr. Kamara emerged as the victory man. Okay. So even though in choice, you know, you have been surprised many, but it seems like from the earlier stage inside the party, you know, you have the supporters of the party, they're a little bit confused and etc. And what will be a back is like that convention day. There are many things we don't hear now. We will not be no prior to now. Like the convention, we know say um, they may postpone them, I think, on two occasions. Probably they may get hiccup on the inside, which is possible from what we've come to learn now. And then things that they can't be easy anyway. But in the end, 
Dr. Samura prevailed. And wait till the year he was. He now the president in choice. So hence people they also they say this is a continuation of um, and, and, and the president's third term. Should he win? But again, is there a problem, you know, a continuation of a third term? Because if this man happy for go forward and win, yes, of course, you go capitalize on the gains of the All People's Congress, the ruling party, for continue for take that trajectory. Day. Because it's a learning curve. And I don't learn from the many mistakes. But we'll come to that at some point. Okay? But on October 15, the All People's Congress made a choice that Samora Kamara would be their man, much to the surprise of a great many people. So people really ask the question again, you know, it's like after all these choice where people they don't make, you know, all this yaba, all this go and come where people they don't make. You see, it's like, well, Una in the end, now this uh, man we then call Dr. Wilson Samora. Una na this man. Good morning. Thanks for having me. So again, let me see whether we go able for hear it from this man himself, ladies and gentlemen. At the time for see whether we able for you from this man himself, because where people have ask question and rightfully so, who is this man called Dr. Wilson Samora Kamara? Who is he? We've got a right to know, the people have got a right to know. So before I go any further for try for say I'm in the way out Sabian from waiting and all research, let we find way for go forward and see whether at some point we will hear Dr. Samora himself. But in the meantime, let me give for stress on some point they want to know. And what we all know by this time, which is Dr. Sambora Kamara is a developmental economist. Okay? Dr. Sambora Kamara is a developmental economist. And he gets very strong foundation in diplomacy, microeconomics, macroeconomics, public finance, central banking, central banking, and the financial sector policy analysis and reforms. Hmm. What a mercy. And this is not only done soon. I mean, the, the list is very long. So anyway, listen to Dr. Samora. Have a proper message so that we we'll all go we'll talk at the same level. Yes, uh, and I wonder whether I'm ever can I get point one. But it's an opportunity for me this morning to uh, take advantage of an invitation for Kaya. So I'm going to look at Dr. Samoa Kamao, if you have been and inquired. That are the main points that they want to look at. All the years they are in the room and the back. Who is he? This was an interview. So he says, I've answered the question. The APC, how you feel? And how you handle everything now? So people will be sitting at this quiet time. Well, I'm telling you, they don't see Samura Kamara. Well, I'm sure they don't see and feel the policies that over the years with Samura Kamara uh, bring to, to, to bear um, the policies of financial sector reform, the policies on fiscal policy, the policy on, on, on creation of institutions like NRA, NACI, uh, procurement authority, etc. Most of the institutions they are so now under Samura Kamara. In, in reform package, all the financial reform management, and then programs they can. And then after that, Samuel Kamara also has uh, ministered already several budgets uh, for this country uh, in parliament. And after that, uh, don't be central bank governor, I don't read a statement on monetary policy, I don't prepare for the first time of financial sector monetary policy uh, strategic plan. On that, President Kuma, Samura Kamara also lead the preparation of the agenda for change as well as uh, the agenda for prosperity so they may not have seen it they have not done seen physically but i'm sure they don't get a feel of, uh, of, of, of the policies they want to promote, promote them. yes family live and clear from the man in martin self udana in and that tells you that by and large this man on the loom heavy in the background you not been in at the foreground, but be always in at the background. And you hear for yourself. Earlier on, I said Dr. Kamara, a developmental economist, he gets a very strong foundation in diplomacy, macroeconomic, public finance, central banking, along with the financial sector policy analysis, along with reforms. 
heads you've been seeing on the shuttle between is either you know here then a ministry of finance it didn't have the central bank or it didn't have the foreign ministry. So we'll get for deal with the categories there at some point. But you can see the man in resume, a brief of the resume. That tells you how heavy this man was and still is. So we also know that you hear what he said. say. The APC can always boast of the flagship program. We are two forms where we could talk about at length at some point. A, the agenda for change. B, the agenda for prosperity. So, now by step, as one, the takeoff, you know, yeah, when the four pillars where they said almost seems attainable, they step are up to the agenda for prosperity, which means that whatever prosperity they now acquire from the agenda for change, begin for supposed to begin for filter into people's pockets. But ladies and gentlemen, today we talk about Dr. K uh, Samura Kamara specifically, but we will see that we will use terminologies that interchangeably because the man who we talk about is associated heavily with the ruling party. So the ruling party will want to talk about their strength as a matter of fact. You also get for tying Dr. Samura Kamara inside because now he's been done at the forefront of this agenda. Okay, in the architect, if you check up, you will see footprints all over this agenda for prosperity and agenda for change. But we'll continue for push on with what we know about this man. Controversially, you know, when we look back, we know say candidates then, and we get some heavy candidates then. When we say we don't be there in the know, be at some point they feel say, well, it will be this, either this, or it will be that. So we don't say. Prominent among these people were people like John Bonos, who was a former um, um, CEO of um, the largest um, mining company in the country. That would be Sarah Rutai, but with some controversy around, and the Attorney General. These are some of the controversies that are involved because the Attorney General, um, Joseph um, Fish Gerald Kamara, still happen for maintaining position whilst he declares he won't be president of the nation. I mean, you can see, you can see how funny the situation, you know, here was. How funny. How can you continue for Sam in that kind? This is not to be to make the decision, of course, and that's passed. But we did learn from them kind of things there. And therefore, we the people, we the people, they deliberate on that issue there, that some of the things that we don't agree with should never again happen. You can't occupy their position and they are supposed as Justice Minister and Attorney General of the country. Where the law them, where you they make, now you get for pass pass the law them, manage them, execute them, where come away under, now you get for push them, or you hand prints and they all over them, then you they aspire while you they inside the office. No. That doesn't really sound right. So anyway, these were some of the popular candidates. John Bonos, he said, the former CEO of um, the Rutile Mines, um, John Fitzgerald Kamara. These people ran an exorbitant and expensive campaign for become leader of that country. Along with another charismatic man, Dr. Kaifala Mara, we also ran a campaign full of exorbitance. Okay? The people's man. That was obvious, and I'm speaking, you know, here from physical evidence that we all saw. However, again, it happened for BC, Dr. Um, Samora Kamara was the man who emerged as the victor. And the reason why we really emphasis on this again is because up to this day, even though the, the, the cracks have been papered over, but nothing will come back again. So sometimes you want to deal with them in its entirety so that you push them away. Or even if it does come back, at least you will have addressed most of what was controversial then. Okay? So now this will be try for you. But Dr. Samora Kamara, all along, was the architect and the orchestrator behind most of the things that were APC were attributing self to successes. So over the last 10 years plus counting in governance, the ruling party, most of the achievements the flag, uh, uh, the flagship programs like the agenda for prosperity, the agenda for change. These were programs with Dr. Kamara in print. They all over. So we continue for look at Kudan and this man. We don't talk about his strength then, in professionalities and etc. But he had for let you get shy away from him because for the last ten years, if the man on the loom large within this thing. Then you will find out, say, it just acting again for do away 
without mentioning in strength in both the country's finances, economics, and the banking sector, where it only play a key role, significant role, in the many years or so where it don't serve. Sometimes it gets a bit confusing because this man don't serve with country. Now let's move away from the APC for a moment. And I say confusing because when he attributes in, in, in contribution, in developmental roles, in plans there, in architectural skills, in developmental goals, the entity that we don't have create or create, who said don't left in marks, it go way beyond APC. Okay? And the point where they try to make here is those of us that are in the diaspora, and most of the time our arguments are based around this line. Experience wise, if you read the money resume, it's the envy, or supposed to be the envy of most people. Undeniable, right? And we will talk about facts. So the strengthening of public expenditure, this is not a place where you can find all the money under. And then things that go way beyond the APC. This man on the now in national domain for more than 30 some more years and still counting. So if you talk about the government of um, Saigu Momo, he was there because immediately when he came to college, he straight away move on into national uh, um, service, straight away into the banking sector from, um, from college days. And I listen to Ramway be the explain more college because we will talk about that as well. Because there are so many burning issues. But we need for take into consideration the situation as they are now, as they were then. And that are the essence of this identical program. We will look at the then as compared to the now. When Dr. Kamara Bide College, for example, as I understand, there were seven or nine of them in a classroom. There were a couple of things associated with why there were seven or nine. But then the capacity that was available then could absorb them as compared to the now. Then the situation with them build around the services, especially public services, whether not Guma, water services, the electricity code, and etc. or grid, then call them, the education facilities, the health facilities, to which all of which we get significant and serious problems. But if we get for a look at the then as supposed to the now, after the war, there's been a massive strain on the services. And any government will experience such. Any government, I repeat, will experience such. In so short a time, for things that were, you know, envisaged, and then they happen. And these are, we will get war, okay, in which the country was massively destroyed. Now we can look at other countries there in terms of a comparable analysis and see countries that will suffer similar things that will suffer even less or even more for seeing how much they struggle now. I know people like it attribute the cases to a place like Rwanda, but we need to look deep into the case of Rwanda and how come kudos to Rwanda and how come they make them so fast. Which of course is not impossible for me that we can make them, but just to talk about strain on the public services. When people then return, when we deal with again at some point quickly, they put strain on the services. People will not go back where they were before the war. They came directly to the city. So if a city was built for 15, 20,000 people, now you have a million plus people in the city. Tell me, Bo, how uh, is government you know, you're going to be able to sustain in the short term, in the short term, because people then keep the calm, you know, the responsibility for take care. I'll talk about this now in the um, um, past program, that there is a kind of social contract between the government and the people vis-a-vis -vis the people are supposed to government. People bear some responsibilities as well, okay? Because you get for help government, hence the saying, if you reverse back to the late President of the United States, John Fitzgerald Kennedy, Ask not what your country can do for you, but what can you do for your country? What have you done? So therefore I ask, what have you done for your country? When they say government don't get responsibility, but we equally say people as well get some responsibilities, and very many of us are living to those responsibilities, but we equally get for be very open, very um, very transparent, and etc. And we're not saying that corruption because we quick forget things confused. Corruption is rife under this government, okay? 
these are the problems, you know, yeah, when um, Mr. K uh, um, Kamara, not the, the flag bearer, but um, the justice minister in the running campaign, one of the weaknesses was questions that were being asked as to how many people in prosecute when they be the head of certain bureau for prosecute people away, do corrupt practices with thief. How many? I suppose again to how much he they earn. So many questions. But now remember, said a different aspect now they talk about. Okay? So we will talk about us, how people will return the programs, the way governments um, earmark, the way it put into place for accommodate some of them things they need. But we know, say, along the way, while government been getting this long-term planning, a long-term planning, not short-term planning, for put money in our people in pocket, for let people like, climb the social ladder so that they go able to afford, always disaster strikes. So we go come to that again. But when they talk about the life and time of Dr. Samura Kamara, the man with the APC, the ruling party, don't put forth for become the next president of the country. Do you think Dr. Kamara will make a good president? Do you think the APC deserve another term in office? Have you got issues with the way the APC don't run the country? And people, when they talk about change, have we really asked people what kind of change do they want? Because even myself, I'm getting confused at this point, and I don't try to ask the question. And as much as I ask the question, I they become for get a little bit confused as to when people then talk about change, are they begin to understand that in a different dimension, the change where people they want is it an economic change? Is it political change? Is it a, a change towards you know a different direction? Or is it just a change of government? What do people want? What sort of change? We don't say they want change. What kind of a change? Because even some people, when you talk to them, yes, they want change, but it's not a change of government, but a change of direction in which the government they go. So that has to be made clear. But when we talk about Dr. Kamara, when are the flag bearer of the party, you also find and say you get for intertwine with the ruling party 10 years plus in office. Do you think the APC have done well? Do you think there are areas that they could strengthen, areas where they could have done better but did worse? Do you think corruption that they tended to not look at the way in which corruption was going? Do you think that they rewarded public servants who were caught clearly causing problems for the government? In other words, siphoning funds to personal and private and selfish use. These questions are relevant as we come up to the elections of 2018 this March in a few weeks' time. Very, very relevant because the economy, even though we are a people more of personality calls other than issues or policies, because we can just talk on top of them, we rather go for people other than the policies. But at the same time, we are saying, ladies and gentlemen, for Una, we just to join the, the forum, we did talk about Dr. Samura Kamara, the APC flag bearer. Now we talk about Naya TD. I want to welcome you all again. Vilma, how are you? You see, all the way from Lithuania, we've got somebody we don't join the line as well. Aminata, welcome. Rose, welcome. You told me that you will. Yes, um, please can you keep reminding viewers and listeners of the topic tonight? The... Yes. Thank you, Mr. Hamilton. I've just got a reminder, you know, because people and they join intermittently, so I get an obligation for the remind people of the topic. Thank you very much, Mr. Hamilton. Um, ladies and gentlemen, we are on the theme elections special hashtag Sierra Leone decides. Hashtag Sierra Leone decides, and this is relating to the upcoming elections, which is just a few weeks away, and the stakes are only getting bigger. We've been promising we go look at the candidates then, especially the major ones, namely the National Grand Coalition, which we talked about the week before last. I mean, in leader, we chronicle in leader, when our Dr. Kan Alaji Kande Kone Yumkela. And just last week, we talk about retired brigadier, former military head of state, Julius Mada Bio. T 
today as we speak right here in the then and now we are talking about the candidate the flag bearer of the ruling party all people's congress apc the flag bearer is none other than dr samura kamara we the contest for the we will get for contest for the presidency under the apc flag so with a scrutinizer we put her under the microscope right here on this channel so one of the people let get the verdict for make the stakes are getting bigger Daddy J. Cole, welcome to the house, my Gambian friend. Thank you very much. Mr. Spain, welcome to the house. So with the chronicle the life and times of Dr. Samura, they look at whether he fit for office. And by and large, what we don't say so far, goodness me, this man in resume is, is heavy. It's heavy. And I say that because it's available for all to see. Because you see. One thing again, we once fell out, and when I talk to people out there, is although we don't they mature and we they move upwards, there comes a time when we get for look at not only within we own party. No worries at all, sir. Daddy J. Cole, welcome. Mount Jara. <laughs> um, not only from the ruling party, but we get a good reason for do cross party business. In other words, look now another party, look for potential, smart people, relevant people, clever people, significant people, people that will matter to the developmental goals and aspirations of the country and its people, and bring them over for let them serve. So in other words, what am I saying? Not because empowerment, well done. Yes, um, yeah, we're talking about empowerment. This is what the channel is about. We aspire for providing information, because we believe information is power. When people are informed, as we expect them to in this upcoming election, so that they will make an informed choice, then they get independence. No one tells them what to do, how to do, what to do, but rather themselves, they are empowered to think. They've got the processing. They can do it themselves. So at the same People that can be taken from another party and bring them come towards the other party, the ruling party. So it not only means, say, for example, APC is in power. So APC therefore only deal with people that will get APC card. Let me look around. Seven million people. Where are the competence? Where are the significant people? Where are the people that matters in the area that we need them most? Where are the accountants? Where are the auditors? Where are the doctors? Where are the engineers? Where are the scientists? Where are the educators, the academics? Let me look for relevant people for serving a capacity. It's not good rewarding someone to serve in a capacity when they cannot do the job you know, that they have been given. That's so corruption itself they breed. That's so their potties in the beginning. That's so cronies in the beginning. The issue of reward. It should be country first. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, before I divert, Mr. Consular Jalo, welcome to the show, my friend. Before I divert, we will talk about Dr. Wilson Samora Kamara, the man where APC put forward for being the flag bearer where they go contest for the presidency under the APC flag. Now, in life and time and in achievements, and the man himself now we look at. This man, he asked for just separate from the governments of the day. And sometimes when this man makes some asking, the way he, he, he bring up some points, we tend Kiwa for Kiwa, you know, he say, no, no, we don't agree. But at the acts that we look into the issues, they are deeply. Because this man has been around, not in the foreground, rather in the background, looming large. So when he attributes himself to areas, or national entities such as NASIT, such as NRA, National Revenue Commission or Agency, which two institutions that are heavy in the developmental process in Sierra Leone. Yes, um, I'm just reading a comment by a brother, you know, um, Mr. Cabo, thank you very much that people need a change. But as you said, okay, we've got the first caller on the line. Yes, uh, Kola, welcome to the dinner now for 
the benefit of everybody, both here in the UK and around the world. Will you please state your name and where you are calling from, please? I'm calling from Mingo Style Restaurant in London, Dr. Bakker. Thank you, Master. Welcome to the show. What have you got to tell us? Uh, first, I would like to commend you for doing a good job at coming up with a vital program like this. Um, my, my, my concern is we are looking too much into politics. And my belief is that our problems doesn't lie in politics. Our problems in Sierra Leone lie on our attitude. There is a serious attitudinal problem in that country, in Sierra Leone. Um, for since I was born, since I reach that age where I can understand things, it is that our people, myself included, we have come to accept wicked things in our society. We have come to accept corruption, dishonesty as, as part of our daily lives. We have come to accept so many bad things. Uh, for example, lack of integrity, lack of honesty, lack of respect. So it's not just about politics. And when we take these issues upward, um, going into politics with, it, with them, then we are certainly bound, bound, bound to fail. Uh, Let's take an example. Our current president didn't become corrupt when he entered um, um, into politics, or the officials there, they were corrupt before they entered into politics. Because that's how the system has been designed. It's been designed that all of us should become corrupt, unfortunately. So what we need to do is to look at how we can change our attitude. Take for example, for us in the UK, and probably uh, in the rest of the world, the way we treat one another. So if I go to Sierra Leone now to participate in politics, I'm bound to become corrupt. So the politicians going into this election, they, they are going, I mean, I'm 90% sure they are going into politics, most of them, or at least 90%, uh, I would say, are going to into politics because of their own selfish needs. So it, it, it would be much more better for us to start looking not just about the politics, not just about the elections, but about the attitude of ceremonies, how we can change. Because if we don't change, we will go with these same attitudes into a politics. And, and that means we're best time to feel forever. I will stop here for now and give other people uh, time to call, and then I will catch up with you later. Um, just before you go away, first of all, I must commend the brother because what he's just done, he's just spoken the truth to power. Did you hear where he started from? This is from a top bottom approach, from top down approach, and it takes courage. And I appreciate you for that, and I must commend you for that. But I wanted to ask just one quick question before you go away, if you can contribute as to what I can say. You did mention, you know, yeah, like the origin of this corruption doesn't start when people are in office. It starts long before they are in office. And the beginning from the president who at one time was here, either in the United Kingdom or generally in the diaspora. Do you have any advice? Do you have any form of uh, any form Matrix system that you think we can we can put in place the way we can start from as a people to begin to grow up in a mature form to avoid such things so that we can become more relevant and more corruption free in our country. Yes, please, I can I can I can name few for you. Um, first we have to overhaul our educational system and bringing things like uh, uh, anti-corruption into our 
curriculum. That's one thing right from primary school. We should introduce things like anti-corruption within the primary school curriculum so that when kids go home, they will be able to tell their parents that this and that that you're doing is not right. We should start developing that, that, that type of culture. Secondly, we should start practicing good governance. Um, whether it's, it's, it's political governance or corporate governance, we should start practicing those things. For example, we should honestly distinguish the executive from the judiciary, from the, leg the legislature, which is uh, parliament. There should be a clear line of distinction. And, and, and we therefore need leaders that have the willpower to do that for the people and not just for their own needs. So, as I said, firstly, uh, we need to uh, overhaul our, our, our educational system. That's it right from the bottom right from primary school, anti corruption measures. We need to really distinguish uh, among those three. There should be clear lines, um, build up institutions like the police and all the, the, the audit departments and all those things. And another thing we can do is to be serious about penalizing people that actually get into corruption. I don't believe that poverty leads to corruption. I believe corruption leads to poverty. You see, I believe the other way is because we are corrupt in that in Sierra Leone and in most parts of the world, but more, more acutely in Sierra Leone and in Africa, I would say. So, um, yes, some stringent penalties that, for example, if you're found guilty, now please listen to this carefully, if you're found guilty by the court, by the court of the land, again, if you're found guilty by the court of the land, say, in appropriation funds of about a thousand pounds, this is just an example, there could be different thresholds. A thousand pounds or ten thousand pounds. I honestly think that you should be shot. That you should be shot publicly. As I said, uh, um, and this is coming from if you are found guilty by the court of the land, not by the president, not by his colleagues, not by his family, but by the court of the land, that person should be shot publicly. And until we start taking stringent methods, stringent, we start teaching our stringent penalties, people will not stop corruption. So, uh, uh, yes, there are so many, but those three that I've mentioned, one, we overhaul the educational system right from the bottom, two, we distinguish amongst those three um, bodies, and then stringent penalties. Then I think things, uh, among other things, uh, Life will start improving in Sierra Leone and in Africa at large. I think I'll stop there for now, please. Yes. Um, 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 I'm currently at Migos, but uh, my customer is at Well done. Um, first of all, Mr. Red, when you did, welcome, welcome to the house. And Mr. Roland Hamilton, um, I want to say, I want to say thanks because I, I like people that speak truth to power, and what you say. Although a little bit surprised the measure that you've gone implies you know, the way how you are seeing and taking things now. Because I've always been of some opinion in which stringent measures have to be taken. Because you have... Sorry, you're still on the line. Yeah, I'm listening to you. Okay, yeah, there's plenty of background noise. Uh, stringent, oh, sorry. Measures, stringent measures have to be taken. Because you have to understand the psychology of your people. Mr. Dr. Jalo, welcome to the house. You have to understand the psychology of your people, and this is the way you deal with issues. And to deal with those issues, once you understand that, then that means you can be able to rein in the way how you want to break things down, you know, here to some level. In other words, corruption. I absolutely agree with you. There has to be stringent policy. The government in power now, they did establish a department called a Department of Attitudinal Change. And this is one thing that you refer to. So everybody did agree that there's a serious problem of attitude. And I said earlier that there's a social contract between government and its people, vis-a-vis -vis the people and government. Typical example, government is developing some areas in terms of the roads, okay? 
some of the items on the roads have been taken away by the very people who are supposed to enjoy the benefits of these items that have been put on the road. Homes, for example, and other road signs have been taken away. Um, Mr. Hamilton, you, you have the noise. So, um, uh, um, yeah, thank you. So, um, the, the, okay, I just have another caller on the line. Okay, as I was saying, there's another caller on the line, and um, it seems like an international call. Hello, caller. Can you hear me? Hello, caller. Can you hear me? Hello, caller. Can you hear me? Caller, can you hear me? Hello? Hello? Yeah, caller, can you state your name and where you're calling from, please? Hello? Yes, caller, if you can hear me, will you state Hello? Can you hear me, caller? Caller, can you hear me? Okay, will you state... Now, right? Yeah, will you state your name and where you're calling from, please? I'm Rex, what is it? Calling from Sierra Leone. Okay, um, that's, uh, thank you very much. Uh, hello? Yeah, hello, can you hear me? Rex, if you can hear I me. Hear you. Yeah, I can hear you. Uh, you are live, my friend. What do you want to say, please? Uh, actually, all I want to say is about the topic about. Is about okay, 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 I want to speak basically on Samura. Yes, um, go ahead, please. Let me hear you what you get for say. Since you call from Peter, okay. let me hear you back to you back. Okay, 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 okay. Well, uh, what, what, what I want to say? Yeah. Look at Samura. Yeah. Okay, yes, we say get the potential. We get the, the, the charisma. We get the know-how. We get all Trevor. We get all the IMF. We get all the big international offices then. And popular all around the world. Okay, yes. We say that that's good, that's right. Yeah. But what we get if he didn't get the chance to take for the country, if he will continue that work day, I say, okay, I will stay at his coma in, in, in government. And if you want to be successful, one day, like, is it so? Because actually, if you look back then, we get so many, so many bad words. And okay, I'm talking about the kids, we talk to yes, all this about one, about one, about one, about one. But now, yeah, okay, guys, I will say, because it's an election, like now, now light seeker. We see light seeker going to election. Hmm? Yeah. Hello? Yes, I'll listen. The one that listen to you go ahead. We see that light seeker. Huh? Okay, now we see that because it's an election, light seeker. But actually, we see that she is not improved by the electricity business. That's the improvement. Huh? And now we see too many people in the car, too many people in the car. I think, I think, what's that they are now? And what about just coming home? You are right now, they do extremely well for the room because I really, it must be a little bit my past that we said before. But it's not my past, it's not going to be bad. But now I can tell you, now it's not going smooth. The only thing that I'm going to say is that I'm going to say, but now I ask if they change the APC government and count the one inside there, or they count the as if I have you going or you get a going. Then we'll come and continue our play because many of us will not see it, and all the guys are inside, and the government will get to the forget what's up. It causes them and you, we can go them, they go way before, you know, you go again. I don't see many of you know, 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 they are all qualified. They are all qualified, so we are all together, they are all qualified. They are all qualified, folks. Well, yeah, yeah, those are the same. What about you? Who's the one? 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 Who's the now, if they give, if they give, as the occupants, they give another view. What more you can do? Or they give, you can do, can do, or they give some more, what is the more you can do? But me, as for me, they are kissing me. They are need a change. I need a change of government. I need a change of, 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 of party self. I can say, I need a change of all things. Because, as for me, I don't get, I don't, I don't, I don't after all this two party system. I really get it fed up with them. Because so many times they fail. Look, look, just get over there. And uh, that I you from IMF from I M F office. Like I said, I M F. I remember, like you call, I don't know if you're mistake. Right. 
about missed phones. How, how long was that? All the time, missed phones, missed phones, missed phones, missed phones. APC, I said, APC, I said, in a fake government. They don't need a fake government in this country. We need for children to learn me. We need for put all across your board. And he said, Dr. Kazan, can I get that to me? He qualified. What be a chance? I don't, I don't want to make a video or whatever. They give no food for nobody. But that was the point. That was the way you put the point. They make you become leader. No, no, no. If, 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 if they get a chance, me and do me, for sure. Because I don't want to get that. I can buy, I can buy for a CS. It is because you are there. It is do extremely well. I mean, I know because you, you see the potential in the man. Okay. You see the potential. You see, you see the one. You see, you see, you see yes. Because I, I watch so many clips them out there. We, I watch it Saturday, and I don't know if they have the guys come inside. One leader they talk uh, on, on, on the on the TV say, say take, uh, for example, there was a doctor and 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 kind of you kill out here alone. Take example, you kill out here alone. You don't do many so many things that. African activist. I, I was so proud of it. I was so proud of it. made his stand up for the love of this guy. Imagine this guy, this guy was where this is I'm not Sabi. I'm not Sabi. I said, I don't watch it. I don't watch TV over the over over and the, the, the satellite. What I eat, I don't make up. I was so I was so pleased and not see me. For me, I don't know if that possible to so kind of even kill me. For me, I don't want to watch yes. He came from the president, he came from being the president of this country. And it can't do any changes that he not say the change. It is very change in the country. Thank you. Okay, just a quick question before you go away. Thank you so much for your contribution. But if you hear me, since you recall from Freetown, you since you recall from yes. Freetown, you want you were able to tell me waiting at the general mood. I mean just the general mood. How you see because election not there too far, waiting at the stakes or waiting at the tension look like, waiting you hear you, waiting at the vibes. Well, if I can say, if I can say the tension, if I can say the vibes, right now, you know, in the old man, we say, right now, the tension, it did it. Just today, I want the Amama Fee, the Dr. Kelly 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 Yes, Kelly 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 I hear tension. I remember you said we were at the creation of the net profits. You see the guy about the local for APC, but make out of the people, make out of the free at all. But you don't see him, just the same. But the people who are going to be, but how are they? But how are they? But how are they? And you know yours. So you are going to buy a So you can say that, so what you want to go home, and you say, as a matter of politics, you can go home for that show. Well, I'm not calling because I like the new t-shirt and new polo. They come with young money, come with. So that's an essential day. Yes, no matter what the AI, everybody so enthusiastic for this election. Everybody ready. And what we're talking about is not going to be heavy. There, we're going to put everybody. We're going to do the we're going to go for the guys there, as I can see. Okay. All the time, okay. Okay, thank you very much. And that was a contribution from all the way the capital city of Sierra Leone, Freetown, where in a few weeks' time there's going to be elections. Just a quick welcome to, just a quick welcome to my Nigerian brother, Mr. Oluwale Elibiju, and Mr. Victor Gaba. Thank you so much, cousin Donald Gaba, all the way from Deep Eastern. Welcome to the show, cause. Uh, Mr. Dauda Jalo, how is the sound? Ladies and gentlemen, I hope that the sound is good. Just for recap quickly, but before I recap, I want to make a known that at half past nine, we get an expert, I would like for say an expert in terms of, um, I would like for say an expert in terms of labor laws, union. Those of we will get problem in our workplace, yeah, thank you very much. Those of we will get problem in our workplace, we get one expert where they can talk about union laws, the importance of joining unions, the advantages of being in a union, the laws around union. So we will get Mr. David Target in about half an hour's time or 21 more minutes' time. Okay? We will get Mr. Target online for tell me about labor laws, the advantages of unions, and etc. Don't forget, keep tuning. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the show. A very important show for those of whom are we just to join. I hope the sound level is good. We did talk about Dr. Samura Kamara, the man we APC put forward for become the standard bearer 
for the All People's Congress and subsequently presidential candidates in a few weeks' time, the election will not get for a whole other country. Okay, thank you, Mr. Jalo. The election will not get for a whole other country. So now the man I would look at, Dr. Samora Kamara, would they look at this man and they say, who is he? But just before we go into that, we get two last callers within the last five or eight minutes or so. I just want to recap on that. Because we are all sort of concerned, and this is now we talk about, we're not going to wait until after every five years when we see elections. We as a people have to have a conversation, okay? Before, after elections. There's a saying that when you not listen to the news, you not watch TV, you not read papers, you are not informed. But guess what? When you do, you watch news, you read papers, you are misinformed. In the advent of social media, where information readily then at the tip of our fingers, where information has been weaponized, we have to be careful as to the information where they come. So this channel, they provide a filter, where they filter the news and put on to one of the people them for decide. So we ask the questions and then you make the decision. Welcome to the then and now. Earlier on, we had Mr. Roland Hamilton. We make some, some really, really critical points. The brother made some really critical points. He spoke truth to power. And now, Uda the normal can say so. He will classify such people who speak strongly on their nature there as very, very patriotic people. Because why? They want to see an outcome which is good for the entire country. And not mention any side in just say these are the things that need to be done, which is we have to rein in on corruption. And briefly, because you know, they get the time, I suppose, they also give me some brief figurements on how for reigning on corruption. We get for get strong laws. In other words, we get for empower and, and, and strengthen the institutions that will be get in existence. There has to be an independence between the three arms of government. So the legislature, which is parliamentary, must be separate from that of the judiciary and that of the um, the executive, they all should be independent of each other whilst they work together for the better good of the country. But unfortunately, we know that this is not the case because there has been so many conflicts of interest and what the brother supposedly was saying, like, this must end and the way to end, he even go to the extreme, some people will call it extreme, but I say when you understand the psychology of the people that you are dealing with, you have to resort to extreme measures Jerry John Rollins in Ghana, he did it before he ran Ghana in to waiting Ghana day into so. You will get people and they complain. Of course, you will always have people complaining. Hence the American saying, damn if you do, damn if you don't. But if you believe in them and you get people and going along, you have to do it if it's got to profit the many and not the few. Jerry Rollins do in Ghana. He put people in a poll. And why he do them? Not to out of selfishness. Now because if you want to see a greater, a beneficial, a very good Ghana, do you know that Kwame Nkrumah be instrumental in the policies of the Western powers back in the 20th century? Did you know that? And see who we are today? Kwame Nkrumah, Osajifo, was instrumental in the politics and policies of Europe, especially in England. In the 20th century, but see us. So sometimes some inconvenient, hard decisions have to be taken. So the brother talk about, you know, we don't need to accept corruption. We don't need to take them for granted. We need to do things and, and put things into place. If we get for resort to extreme measures, then we have to do so. Okay? We have to do so. So we also, the brother also say, not to only politics, although they act for level devoid myself of politics, but not to only politics. There are so many other things that we could be talking about. There's arts, there's culture, there's tradition, there's family values where you also talk about. But all that thing and they be no laws. Now, in make, you know, yes, some of the things that we talk, where government build road, people let they go take the signs for different reasons, either for blow fire or not. So you see some of the problems. And the brother rightfully talk attitudinal change. I wish we could expand on that, but because of time. But well done to that contributor. I must say thanks. Mr. Spain, you been asked earlier on for the number. I've put the number there. And just for repeat, it's 077 4010 7250. It does not only or always have to be about politics. You can call and talk about something else or the shape 
or direction you would like for the channel to go. Because one thing I can say for sure is this channel is here to stay. Okay? So, but we can only make it stay if we continue to have the sessions and we have frank discussions on every level, big politics. But remember that politics is looming large. And some of the reasons why we dwell on this, especially with the theme, is because, like every other station or uh, public media, most times it's about the rating. Waiting you will get people left for come, you know, yeah, for listen to. Waiting the trend. Waiting right now, then, are the public domain. And in this case, it's about politics. But remember that this channel, you get weak, you get depth. As we speak, there are nationals from many countries that they look at in the chat room. So as we progress and we, we election come and gone over with, we get to talk about different topics. And I can begin for enticement. One of the major topics we get to talk about is the issue of uh, former Liberian President Charles Taylor. Why is the language not jail because of a Sierra Leonean problem? What you take on that? But we'll just begin to develop that. And that's going to be an interesting take because I get talking at the background. And there's so much more. But today, we are talking about Samora Kamara. But before I move on, there was another caller from Freetown who also talked about in one change. And how today, now, Mafa feel, Mafa feel, now, some feel up na region told Malama, uh, Dr. Kale Yumkela, and people let me did it. So, in the kind change we want, in a government change, now he want. Okay? There are different direction. That's what he wants. Okay? They talk about roads and one have you. But yes, you know, you read all of this. But I also get a little bit confused when you talk about um, whether these other people, if they happen for become the new leaders of the country, in other words, move APC in a power, what about continuation? Because there was something he said about continuation. So will it be good? You know, is it looking at continuation, you know, in a sense of what the APC don't achieve, whether the other people in Okan can continue from there or they go and institute their own disciplines? Okay? We've got another caller on the line. Hello, caller. Welcome to the day and now. Will you please state your name and where you're calling from, please? Yeah, uh, my name is uh, Victor Spain. I am calling from UK, Bromley, to be specific. Yeah, I'm calling today, yeah, because I want to contribute to your program. And I'm very impressed for what you've been doing over the, the past weeks. Uh, today, I, I have uh, a question to ask on Dr. Samora. Yes, uh, yeah. first of all, Mr. Spain, welcome to the program, and I can assure you that you're live. The world is listening to you. Go ahead, sir. Yeah, uh, I have a simple question for Dr. Samora. Uh, this uh, is going to be into two parts. Firstly, um, he has been in our politics for quite a long time. He has managed the economics of our country for over 10 years. My question today is, is Dr. Samora the best candidate? The APC party, as a party, can put up A, being that he has presided over a failing, a failed state. He, our, economy, our economy is the worst, one of the worst in the world. Is it the best candidate the APC party can put up? Having said that, there was one a once a time when they said our economy is one of the fastest developing in, 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 in Africa. But yet today we see, for example, a bag of rice increasing by over 220 percent. They took power in 2007. Our staple food, a bag of rice, was just 70,000. Today, a bag of rice is ranging from 250,000 to 300,000. Why should we give our country to such a fake economist? That's my question today, sir. Um, first of all, I want to say thanks for the question. And uh, yeah. I've done a bit of a research, so I'm just going to read on that, you know, yeah, and then we will, of course, the rest of the listeners, they have heard your question, and if anybody wants to contribute, because right here, as we speak, there's a cross-section of party people here on this program, and probably someone is going to find the courage to try to address directly the question that you have asked. But just before I begin to readdress what you've just um, um, asked, 
what do you what do you think? I know there are questions and you're expecting answers. What do you think, you know, here on the run-up to the elections? Obviously, you don't think very well of uh, the ruling party. They should give way. But is there an alternative, an alternative in your own opinion? And if there are, who, 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 are, who, who are they? Who do you think, you know, here in a more relevant sense, you know, here can take on the mantle of leadership and take this country out of what you say is a failed economy? Well, uh, in my opinion, I think the APC as a party, uh, uh, they, they, they have so many people who are very educated, very articulate, who can take their party forward. Dr. Samura, I have nothing against. He is educated, an economist who's done well, who's got an impressive CV, I mean CV. But having said that, he has been a player since uh, the APC rule in our country. He has failed, this man has failed, woefully. Our country is failed in every human sector. A worst place for a woman to give back, a failing educational system, a place where 70% of the youth are unemployed. What sort of economics was uh, 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 Dr. Samuel doing? What were the policies? Why should we trust them now? I truly believe, I will not point fingers on who should be uh, uh, their, their leading candidate. That's not my, my, my place to do so. But what I'm saying, they should have done better. Yeah, fair, fair, fair enough, Mr. Spain. Um, that's, a fair, that's a fair assessment um, in terms of the direction which you've led your conversation. Um, yeah. Is there any other thing that you would like to touch on just before I move on? You, you know, um, first of all, thanks for commending the channel. We can only make this channel, you know, yeah, prosper and grow to higher height if we continue to do justice. I really appreciate your call today and um, what you've highlighted. I hope somebody else can pick up the line and try to address it, probably in the opposite, or maybe even join you. Is there any other contribution you would like to make? You're live, my brother. Uh, yeah, thank you very much, sir, for giving me the, 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 the opportunity to be able to express what I think. I think today uh, uh, we should look at change in our country. And I believe we have one candidate in no other person but Kiki One. He is work on the IS platform in, in, in the world. There he might, there might be, that. Sorry, I'm not interrupting, but there might be some people who don't know what Kiki White is. Would you want to tell Okay, Doctor Doctor Kandel Kone Okay. He has worked for UNEDO, he has dealt with a vast sum of money. And he has proved that he is a man who the world can trust. Businesses can trust him. That means if he presides in our country as a, as a, as a leader, investment will flow in our country. He has proven that he is capable, more than capable. He has got the extra expertise to do, to, to develop. He can develop sustainably our country. He can develop our country sustainably. So as a Sierra Leonean, I believe he stands a better chance to think, to, I mean, to bring the changes that we are craving for. So I think we should give him the chance. I think people should think, what's change? People are saying, well, he has been around, he is not, he is uh, not a leader in the, in the team, but he has never been a leader. He has been working under different administration. Now that he is presenting himself that he will be the leader, I think the only thing we can do is we really want to change. This is the man who, who has succeeded for 20 years. He's got a brilliant TV. He's a man, he's got a contract. Where should we let this opportunity go? That's all I have to say, sir. Thank you very much. Yes, I'm speaking truth to power once more. Thank you very, very much, Mr. Spain, for a very, very brilliant contribution. I mean, this channel will entertain diverse views. It's non-partisan. So we entertain diverse views. If anybody feels otherwise as to what the brother have just said, I mean, pick up the phone. Let's hear some rebuttals or let's hear four. If you're against equally, let's hear, let's hear from you. But just to address some of the issues, you know, here briefly, on which I understand is, um, you believe that um, Dr. Samura is a fine gentleman, but he's sad this time. And um, obviously at some point, in your opinion, he's filled the country because of... Um, the policies you are attributing as failed policies. Sure. Yeah. 
Sure, sure, sir. Yeah. Sure. Okay. So again, uh, since in your opinion the APC has ruined, I'm just recapping has ruined the country, uh, yeah. in which seventy percent, you know, yeah, of youths are unemployed and a failed economy. So therefore, it's about time that APC give way to yeah. Yeah. not yeah. other but your choice as a Sierra Leonean. You are, you are entitled to it. Who happens to be Dr. Yeah. Kande Kole Yukela, who has got yeah. you know, yeah, sustainable developmental plans. That will do good and better for the country. We take your view. Sure, we, we take your view on board, and I'm just going to sure. elaborate a little bit. Thank you very much, Mr. Sure, Smith. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, and you're welcome. Thank you very you're much. Welcome. You're yeah, welcome, my you. brother. Thank you. Bye. Yeah. Yeah. So okay. So we move back since we are talking. We've heard from the brothers. Okay. Probably you know yeah. We can entertain a woman. Okay. There's also another caller on the line. Right. Right. Hello, caller. Will you state your name and where you're Hello? calling from, please? Yeah, can you hear me? Hello? Hello? Yeah, yes. Can you hear me? If you can hear me, will you state your name and where you're calling from, please? Yes, yes, again, yes, again. Okay, Rex, go ahead, please. Maybe you left out something? Fire away, please. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, just, I just want to respond to what he is at Speed Justitional. Brilliant. Go ahead. You got the floor. And that exact result was that we were supporting the Minister of Foreign Affairs. We make delegates in the price control area. Right now, example, this is a power of 60,000. All the way up to 250,000 euros again, which is very bad. So, how do I man that poor man with ETS? When I ask, I was taking food. Exactly now, then I'll be part of a failed government. We have the SMB, we have the SMB, as I say, you see the work on a day, then the work on the same place, it is about again. So, I want that time, I said, man, we say, because you need to get the way, you know, state that I feel economies. That's what I feel the economy. And if I can say, just because you say, that means for, that means for, whatever, I can say back again, it is a part of her. Because I have been there, at first, it was the minister of 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 they don't trust out so many businesses where they don't come out successful part. So I support this and this has been only a 10% of what see. I support that. Exactly. Now the point is to directly. The money is all a fee. So I want that, okay, but for example, like if I can say, 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 if I because we will we let power we get to the APC because it was part of it and all that. So I want that new United now that this 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 guy has already the APC of the power. Why why did they want to join the team? Pass the cast president. Why don't you and we they are as new to that person? You can join people and spend the years to buy past president. You can do something for which I just can't see. We will change the people and perspective about you. You go right now. If I can see you get a still name that old man. <laughs> okay, okay, Mr. Rose, um, yeah. stay, stay on the line one minute, please. Um, this is going to Mr. Taggart. We promise the the audience we get for introduce um, a union specialist. We get for talk about the union. I will call on that union yeah. specialist in the next two or three minutes. I just to recap, Mr. Taggart, I will call on you in the next two or three minutes, please. Thanks for your patience. Emmanuel, just a quick question before you go away, Mr. Rose. I understand that you are attending yes. Frabe College, is that correct? Yes, yes, yes. Will you tell us about the state of Frabe College? It's good to have somebody <laughs> right there on the hill itself. I I love that. Poor. If I can say extremely poor. Okay, more good to the I want that our good lectures. I got the good lecture, only the lecture we go why. There is no classrooms. <laughs> and the lecture room we will all wash them. We just go to the Abbey Theater. I want that to be if you meet past five, six, seven class, they go on. I want I want to get to see what's the lecture I say. Oh, 
if we keep on flow, you can say it can jump back so it, with so many different lectures that you go. You can imagine, I don't know who got it, where the way it's true, they just make one of the accounts is a robot who works young, who is very poor. <laughs> and I can say, now, now, as at first, they, 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 they allow students, but they allow students to take the examination, if I can say, but now, Without not if you want to not pay fees, you need to take a look at what we have about paying fees. Now, if you, if you pay fast in the fees, uh, two million four hundred and thirty and thirty six thousand four hundred euros, and the fact is they pull it out of the examination over for the years, they pull it out of it. If you took me and I did part of that, who said they put me in a door for just for just a two million euros, wait, 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 which is very poor right now. I have a goal for holding the honors. I have, I have a honors class. I don't want a honors class. I will do it anyway because why? The two of the honors class with an able sit up. So that's not that, that is any bad. Okay, okay. I wish we get more time because there is so much that we for don't ask you because you did right now the ground itself. But again, just yes. one last question regarding the safe FBC. When you say instead of yes, Nagona classes, you know, you have to go sit on there for whole um, lectures, instead of Nagona for the amphitheater, I they wonder why, now because of capacity, I mean, when are too many, or not the classroom now, fit for, what, what, what do you really mean? As I say, the lecture open day, there's no, there's no, no, no classroom, no classroom for, for, for students, no classroom for lecturers to, 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 to lecturers, none. Okay. None. Now, I mean, not to say that it's not in the population, no? All right. Um, thank you very much for your contribution. And it seems like we get more call. I want to say welcome to Mrs. Bangura. Um, Jeremy Victor Sangu, we are welcome to the house, my friend. Mr. Gali, welcome. And Mr. Osborne, welcome. Um, again, for those of you who are just catching up, we are about to wrap up the first segment of the show because the second segment, the second segment is um, on um, union laws. We're going to have Mr. Taggart in a few minutes, in less than two or three minutes, we're going to have it. I just want to recap because people have been saying a lot of things, but I would like to, Mr. Verdia, welcome from all the way, um, New Jersey. Welcome. Um, just want to stress on one or two things because they talk about presiding over our failed economy. What we can say, because we see it in the books, and this is the argument that I want to make, things that are in the books when you do your research, when you do your work, is like, Dr. Kamara is, you know, is, um, okay, there's another caller on the line. Hello, caller, will you state your name and where you're calling from, please? Yes, um, this is Timo Sass calling from London. Okay, Mr. Sako, welcome to the program then and now. Uh, what would you like to say, please? Your line. Yes, um, I want to respond a little bit. To the last uh, two callers. This is exactly what this channel is about. Yeah, so you've got the floor. You are live, my friend. Go ahead, please. Yes, I think um, these people have been a little bit unfair on um, Dr. Kamara, so to speak. So I want to be. So I want to be on the opposite end of the argument. Um, first of all, I want to start with Dr. Kamara before I go to the entire um, economy itself. Okay, seems like this is going to be a long one. But well, you've got a few yes, of um, them. Yeah, yeah firstly, um, Dr. Kamara, I think there was a um, question mark about his popularity that I could agree. Um, because he actually, people didn't believe that he actually declared his intention. So, um, so, people sorry, think Mr. he didn't resign his position. Sorry, Mr. Sako, uh, you've got some equipment in the background and it's um, causing some problems. Can you oh, turn down, please? Yeah. So, no worries at all. Okay, that's better. You can go ahead, please. It's better now. Yeah. Yeah. So, as I said earlier, I think there were question marks about his popularity. Um, people say um, maybe he didn't declare his intention, he didn't resign his position. 
There's also a question mark that he relied more on the party structure and the party rather than himself as a person. And also why has he not been talking? And there is also the question mark of whether he can provide the kind of leadership required by the people of Sierra Leone. Because some assume that sometimes a successful public servant might not be a successful president. Yeah. Um, I want to say in his defense, we all could agree that he's an intellectual. He understands the economic situation of the country and the current issues at hand. You know, he has an in-depth knowledge of the economy that is where the economy is now, where it was before, where we are now and where we are going. Again, he is a focused individual and the part of the system since 1994. And so, therefore, I believe he knows the lapses of the current administration, and maybe he can be able to scale up the achievements. He's also a, a humble gentleman, and he's willing to accept suggestions from the public. He's passionate about his job, and a team player, as a lot of people would talk about him. He's also an honest man. If you listen to him speak, I think he's an honest man. He speaks honesty and ready to become a president as far as I'm concerned. He has evolved in his career since he's finished university from the private sector government and international community. So he has the vast experience. He's not just a one side man, you know? Yeah. Um, is the architect to APC's achievement. I'll come to that shortly. And then, um, only time Sierra Leone calls him, he's ready to return and serve, you know, and then he has never denounced his um, citizenship as well. And then, um, so because of uh, 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 these things that surround him, for me, I believe, he is the right man to become president of Sierra Leone. And okay. that's why I start from the other the, the guys. Because they are saying we need someone like Kiki Wai to lead Sierra Leone. But my argument is that we don't need someone who doesn't know the issues of Sierra Leone. We don't need someone who is a runaway from Sierra Leone. We don't need someone who is a public lecturer. Being ahead of a you know, you have all the great experts around you who present you with the material that you need. It's just a presentation. It's like you're just a marketer selling these ideas out. Running a country like Sierra Leone is different from running the UNITO. It's different from running the African Development Bank. It's different from running the, the UN. And that's why Kofi Annan said, I am an administrator. I am a United Nations expert. I cannot run the affairs of Ghana because I don't want to fail. Because why? He doesn't know the issues of Ghana. He doesn't know the problems of the ordinary man. Sierra Leone at this juncture needs someone who knows the situation, who knows the issues, who knows how to manipulate things. You know? There are question marks that the government has failed. So me personally, I believe I expected a little bit much from the government. That I'll attest to that. Right? But let's bring certain positives about the current government. Right? So much improvement of roads. So much improvement of power. I met with a gentleman when I went to Sierra Leone. And he was telling me something that actually moved me. He said, all I needed in my life was power. He said, they, they gave me power and it changed my life. He said, every other person or the majority of the people relied on the government. He said, they gave me power. Right. And it changed my life and the life of my family. I met another gentleman around Puja. He said, just the road construction has changed my life. 
because my produce I can able to transport them as quickly as possible and I can get the, 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 the forms that I want. It has changed my life. So it's not everything about government, government, government. There are certain basic amenities that the government can provide that you can make use of and change your life. Right. This, uh, also, we have the free healthcare system. There's one thing we have to do. Everything has a beginning. We have, for example, the Obamacare in America, which is the number one country in the world. But there are still a lot of companies. A country that has all the structures on planet Earth. But the system still falls because it is just the start of the free healthcare system. So why don't you expect the free healthcare system in Sierra Leone to have orders at this moment? With time, it will pick up. I was in Sierra Leone when they set up the massive. It stumbled a little bit, but today, I think Sierra Leone can prove that NASIC is one of the, 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 the government's uh, 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 strong institutions. So everything has its stage. Right. Then also the government has given a lot of rights to women. We talk about international confidence, youth involvement, increasing agricultural productivity. Right? More jobs have been created. The economy has been growing. And there was also the criticism that Dr. Samura was part of the system for 10 years and the system was failed. When Dr. Samura was finance minister, we had the fastest growing economy in Sub-Saharan Africa, growing at 21%. And all of a sudden, guess what? We had Ebola. And they said the impact of Ebola could be equated even to the war. So how could you blame Dr. Samura, right, for Ebola when it's an unforeseen uh, 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 circumstance. Well, How will you blame him Mr. for a month like Mr. Sarko, when be, it's a foreseen circumstance? To be, to be honest to the other, to the other um, um, contributors or those that um, who's, um, who says that you're trying to revolt, um, you're probably taking it for granted that they accuse, uh, or they are accusing uh, Dr. Samura because if someone says that he's presiding or he presided over a failed economy, so therefore you thinking or taking that Ebola was the effect of whatever happened to the economy, so therefore Dr. Samura is being blamed for an Ebola that he's got nothing to do about. He didn't know where it came from, but obviously had an effect. I'm just trying to recap, and I know you want to go on and on. Unfortunately, yeah, yeah, yeah. Unfor unfortunately, time today is um, out of order. We've yeah. actually got a gentleman who has been waiting for a long time, and I've got a few calls in the background for people who want to listen to um, this union expert. We've got a union expert who's going to be telling us about the advantages and disadvantages of unions. I don't know whether he's still on the line. He's been with us from the very beginning. So I'll give you another two minutes to expound, and then I will recap, and then I will go straight to this gentleman to talk to us about the advantages of unions. So you've got the floor yes. once more, my friend. Yes, uh, okay, yeah, this, I'll just round up now, right? So the effect of Ebola hit the economy so badly. So and we had no control of Ebola. We had no control of mudslides. And all of a sudden, the economy, the economy goes back to minus. It goes down to minus. So how will you blame someone who has tried to fix the economy and the economy was growing? It was all over the news. It was all over the place that the economy has been growing, has been booming. But now you say he is not fit. For me, he knows the issues. For me, I think he can fix it. KKY doesn't know Sierra Leone. He sat Sierra Leone for one year and ran away. So for me, all right. He's not a good candidate. We will take your point on board, uh, Mr. KK, uh, Dr. Um, KKY is more of an internationalist, you know, yeah, than um, yeah. you know, yeah, than yeah. being local. So therefore, yeah. he wouldn't seem to understand where his heartbeat is now with the people of the country. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. Thank you so much for the contribution. I will just recap on that and I will go straight to Mr. Tanga. Ladies and gentlemen, if you're just joining in, welcome, um, um, Lucy. If you're just joining in, we're talking about 
election special hashtag Sierra Leone decides. Earlier on, we had a brother, you know, here, Mr. Sako, who was trying to expound on the virtues of Dr. Samura, whom a previous caller or caller, as you know, rejected and said that he was presiding over our failed economy. But this is the thing, okay? The APC government under um, um, His Excellency Ernest Koroma, they, you know, he has set out um, a long-term objective of the country becoming a middle-income earner. These things are quite critical and it's necessary. To achieve these, they had an agenda for change. In the agenda for change, ladies and gentlemen, there were four pillars that they set themselves. And this, you see, that's why I said, Dr. Samura and the government of APC are indistinguishable. <laughs> they are lumped in one. If APC fails, Dr. Samura fails. If they achieve, Dr. Samura achieves. So they had their agenda for change, which was, uh, which happens to be one of the flag bearers or the flagship uh, programs of the APC. In there, they had four pillars, which are the infrastructure or economic development recovery, human development, and then you talk about health, which the brother talked about earlier on. And in that health program, they had, of course, free health care for all, or I think for a certain sector of the society. That was part of the health care. I'm trying to expand on the economy, and I'm going to come there because people are saying, you know, yeah, that the economy failed, which is true, but not how or why. So also education, in which somebody touched on earlier, um, what they did in that agenda for change with the four pillars, which the last was education, was expanded access. That's why I asked the brother who called from Freetown earlier regarding the highest institution of learning, which was once upon a time the pride and anthem of um, the world, if not West Africa, for a big college. So they expanded access, they built on institution and increased enrollment. And to be fair, if you look around the country, although most of it is private entrepreneurship, which is good, that is how people can help their government as well, dotted all over the country are institutions of learning of various kinds of and shades vocational architectural and you name it they are all over the country this is as a consequence of the agenda for change now after the agenda for change came the agenda for prosperity in the agenda for prosperity as well there were four pillars and those four pillars were gender which was cross-cutting in the first one and then you have social protection which had support for people who are not capable, you know, to help themselves, i.e. this would be like the disabled people. Disabled people were well looked after under this agenda for prosperity. And then you had um, the social nets were provided, in other words, um, safety nets for people who could not afford for themselves. And then you had economic diversification, which is quite interesting. You know, sometimes we talk about our mineral resources, and I've been one person that I've been talking about this over and over. But now that I'm going in depth and beginning to understand, do you know that there are other countries as well that have got mineral resources? Do we, or at any point, has any one of us thought that only Sierra Leone is endowed with mineral resources? What I'm trying to imply here is there are other countries that have, so therefore there is competitiveness out there. There's competition. We all have got a market. How do we market the goods? We all have got goods. How do we market our goods? Okay? So other countries have too. So in terms of economic diversification, we were relying on minerals alone, and minerals was becoming a problem for us. So instead, what they did was look into other areas. Okay? Remember, the Ebola came. That's what the brother was trying to allude to. And whilst the country was on an upward trajectory in terms of economics, Ebola came from nowhere and struck the nation, okay? By then, there was 5% growth, and the brother was trying to also attribute to some other things, to which Ebola had a massive impact. And this is the growth at that point when Ebola hit, it brought the economy down to the negative, and imagine, negative 21%, minus 21%. So we can understand the anger and the government should understand the anger of the people at negative 21%. Ebola destroyed the structures that were in place. Whatever was being built upon at the time was destroyed. But now there is a gross growth of plus 27%. 
And why? Because the growth is on an annual rate of 6%. 6%. Okay? So there's diversity growth, independent from the mining sector. So they are now more focusing on tourism. Not mining anymore. Yes, mining is producing. Because you see, iron ore, which became the major function and revenue generate, generation for monies coming into government coffers, was almost like by accident when government, you know, stomped into iron ore. So never again the government is saying, shall we rely on one particular aspect to generate income? So it's been diversified. That's where yeah, the diversification comes from. So right now, as we speak, there's more focus on tourism, on services, on construction and agriculture. The government is also promoting pro something called pro-poor growth. So any gains made from income, from revenue generation, People must begin to feel that. That's how people know that they are okay. And people are moaning because at some point it was so difficult because there was a minus 21% in terms of growth. Negative. But now the projection is plus 27%. And government is targeting a 15% growth. Now they've got six. So if you put the 15 and the six, it negates the negative and bring it in line. Okay, so what am I talking about this pro-poor growth that government is aspiring to put monies into people's pocket, that the far-fetched plan that they had, you know, here into the future, you know, to create, you know, some middle class. If you look at Lonsa, for example, prior to the discovery of the oil, Lonsa was rubbish in terms of what we're talking about. But look at Lonsa today. They've enjoyed the benefit, not in its totality, but then we're saying the then and the now. Even in terms of uh, energy, when this government took over, I'm not making the case, I'm just saying what is there. It was 10% megawatts or 10 megawatts of electricity. Do you remember Kaba Tiger generators? Do you remember, hey, light don't come, you know, now we get on today, now when I get on tomorrow? Because there was only 10 megawatts of electricity being generated in an entire country today under this government of course you can boast of over 100 uh, uh, megawatts of electricity and still counting so i can't go too deep i was just trying to outline you know here some of the achievements in this budget how it's done and the um, production level how it's risen so from a 5.2 percent gdp growth we saw a minus 21. So the agenda for prosperity was significantly dented. Now I will now call and see whether I'm able to get Mr. Taggart online so we can talk about this all important union thing that we've been talking about all along in this program. I hope we get Mr. Taggart because he's actually been very patient with us, listening to all what we have to say about our country. In the meantime, ladies and gentlemen, I want to commend you all. Don't go away, and especially for those of you who are interested in the union, Mr. Spain Collar is right about Dr. Samura's experience. He still has to. Okay, that was for the previous caller. We will air this program again because I knew it was going to be interesting. And next time, hopefully, we'll have more people call. But for now, I want to call on the union man. Mr. Ishmael Dumbuya, welcome to the program, my friend. We are now going to call on the union. Have you got problems at work? Do you understand what unions are? Do you understand what union is for? Do you know the advantages and disadvantages of unions? I'm just going to call on a union specialist who will be talking to us regarding unions. So ladies and gentlemen, please stay put as I try to see whether I can get Mr. Tiger to run the line. Line is ringing. Hello? Yes, sir, Mr. Tiger. I'm very happy to have you on the line. Yeah, hello. Yes, yes, hello, yes, hello sir. sir. But before I go any further, first of all, I must say thanks that you have to sit through all of this. And um, I want to welcome you to the show. And listeners, we've got Mr. David Taggart on the line, as we promised earlier on on this channel. 
He is somebody I will tap as an expert because he's been with the unions for quite a long time and has got a vast wealth of experience when it comes to unions, labor laws, and etc. So Mr. Taggart is going to be talking about union today and unions, the advantages and disadvantages of unions. So Mr. Taggart, a warm welcome to this forum then and now. The floor is all yours, sir. Welcome. Well, uh, thank you very much, Prince, and uh, thank you for that uh, kind introduction. Um, I hope I'm going to be able to convince your listeners that uh, uh, joining a union is, is worthwhile, uh, not just for themselves at work, uh, but also, I'm, I'm sure everyone understands that that unions are uh, collectives, uh, a collective that is, is good for society in general, uh, is progressive in terms of um, helping uh, working people to have um, have a better life. Um, my, my own uh, union, UNITE, is the largest trade union in the UK and Ireland, and it's got uh, 1.42 million members uh, across uh, about 20 different private, public and voluntary sectors. Uh, that includes manufacturing, public services, transport, food, uh, finance, and uh, construction. Um, what I'd also uh, uh, like to talk about is, uh, is, is, of course, my own personal experience of trade unions. Um, I mean, after 38 years of work, uh, I've been in, in more than one union, in actual fact. Uh, I started off, in, strangely enough, in uh, equity, which is the... Uh, the union of the entertainment industry, and uh, then after that, uh, I was a member of the GMB, uh, which is uh, uh, perhaps a more appropriate to what I was uh, doing at that time. Um, uh, the GMB, uh, actually, the, the name of it is the General and Municipal Boilermakers. Um, it's actually a very old union, over a hundred years old, and um, no one actually really makes boilers all <laughs> nowadays. Um, but um, in fact, uh, both my grandfather and my father were, were members of that union, and my grandfather actually did make boilers. Um, and uh, my father later was in the steel industry. Um, uh, and then now, of course, I'm a, a member of Unite, and at the time, myself was a, a union steward in the in the GMB. Um, what's happened, of course, uh, to the larger general unions? Uh, the GMB, uh, which is the second largest union, and UNITE, which is the largest, is a bit like corporations. They've absorbed many smaller unions, and they're now sort of general unions. Uh, the important thing to uh, remember is that uh, nowadays, you very rarely find in your workplace uh, a union branch, because um, given that uh, in the in the 80s and the changes in our commercial structure and our commercial system, um, many of the larger companies were, were broken up. Um, so uh, now you, you very rarely have a, a union branch or a collective branch where you actually work. Um, but it's important to remember that you, you can still be represented with your employer. Your employer doesn't um, have to recognize uh, a trade union. Um, the trade union can come in when you have a problem and represent you with the employer. Um, and uh, in fact, um, my, my, own, my own union has uh, won uh, some 165 uh, million pounds uh, in uh, last year, uh, was won for members and their families by uh, Unite Legal Services in, in direct representation, representation uh, with employers. Um, it, often, this, this is a, a, a state of affairs where you actually go to a an industrial tribunal, uh, but that is almost necessary. I mean, if you if you if you continue to present with employers, they can often convince the employer that it's, it's not worth going down that road um, and be able to actually negotiate for you uh, your conditions. Um, obviously, now the unions don't have the same opportunity to negotiate directly with employers. So, of course, in many cases. Uh, in, especially in the, uh, the public sector, uh, they do. Um, trade union members can earn on average 10% more than people who are not members of unions in, in, in various industries. Um, so what, what's happened in, in terms of actually the changes in our society is um, obviously union membership has, has, has fallen. 
1979, there were 13 million uh, union members in the UK, uh, whereas at present uh, there's uh, 6.5 million. So it's, uh, it's fallen by, by virtually half. Um, and, and this is largely a result of the changes in, in industry itself. Uh, but still, trade unions are a very important part of our society. It, it, it being part also of the labour movement over the last, well, a hundred years really, uh, they've managed through the labour movement and through the Labour Party in the UK to make many changes to the working conditions. I mean, people actually forget this to a, to a large extent, but the working week, uh, you know, the weekends that you, you have free, um, the, the, the shortening of hours, um, have in many respects been down to trade unions, and, and also in terms of actually the work with the Labour Party, the, the work in health service and uh, things of that nature, um, it, it's been very much to the advantage um, of working people. Um, uh, so, uh, did, did anyone want to actually ask me any questions about union membership or anything of that nature? Yes, um, to the general listening public, that was yes. Mr. David Taggart, a man of um, with um, an enormous amount of um, trade union experience, just trying to um, tell us um, about trade unions. A brief recap, um, uh, um, an insight into what trade unions are, where it started off from, why membership, how it's dropped over the years, um, representation at work. Most um, employees nowadays don't repre um, um, allow representation at work. You know, yeah, pretend not to recognize unions, but you can actually go with them. But the floor is open, and Mr. Taggart is asking if there's anyone, because any one of us can have um, workplace situations um, that makes us feel uncomfortable, work-related issues, anything around the unions. Mr. Taggart is available. And if you have a question, Please make a note. You can put it in the chat room. I can read it out to Mr. Taga, or you can equally call the line. You can call the line, and we are talking now about trade union. We've moved away from politics for a moment, ladies and gentlemen. We're talking about unions. Has anyone out there got a question on trade unions? Okay? So while we're waiting for um, callers to call, Mr. Taga, would you want to say how this trend has changed? So what you knew 38 years back when you joined, which one was it? Um, you joined uh, well, equity, I, yeah? Uh, well, that, that was more or less at the, at the start of my working life. But then uh, following that, I was in the GMB and a, a steward in, 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 the, uh, in, in the GMB, uh, similar actually to my, my father who was a steward in, in the steel industry and my grandfather also. Um, but uh, of late, I've been become a, a member of Unite, and I'm not actually active at the moment as a as a as a, as a union steward. Uh, I think what's important in the future is that there are probably. I mean, if we look at Brexit, for instance, um, it's quite likely that there are going to be a lot of changes um, to jobs. I mean, we talk a lot nowadays about uh, Uber jobs. You know, like the Uber Uber car service. Recently, they, 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 they could be called by the, um, the, the GMB um, because they were not, were not regarding their employees as full time members. This is where unions uh, will come in. And 
Yes, um, Mr. Taggart, um, well said. Um, listeners, that's Mr. Taggart on the line. I mean, you can't see it any better. He's asking if there's anyone out there, you know, here with questions. Mr. Taggart, I can assure you that people are really glued into what you're saying. We're just waiting for the first caller or first question, but they are actually listening. And if you are, Mr. Taggart is extolling the virtues, the good virtues of being a member of a union. Trouble is really not too far away. Mr. Spain, I know you're asking for unions contact. I don't know whether you're talking about the union itself or you're talking about Mr. Taggart, who is on the line now. What he's basically doing is, is talking about um, unions as they are, the significance, the importance, the advantages of joining a union. I'm saying employment laws, Brexit is in the making. And um, this is my question to you, Mr. Taggart. With um, Brexit in the making, I know you touched on it earlier on. That is definitely going to have an impact on um, union laws because um, these laws are going to be transferred back into the UK. Will there anything or is there anything that's going to change about these laws? Okay. Um, again, thanks for that. Ladies and gentlemen, we've got basically nine more minutes to go on the show. This show has been great. I want to commend you all, those that were and are still, you know, you're holding on to the show. In nine minutes' time, this show will come to an end. In the meantime, we've got Mr. Taggart on the phone. And I see a lot of you are appreciating, you know, yeah, um, him talking to us about unions. Um, one key thing I can pick up is like um, people who sign on to the unions are 10% a 10 fine in terms of wages than those who are not members of unions. So you get paid 10% more than those who are not members of unions. So the union is a good thing and they provide like a safety card in terms of problems. So it's a good thing to join a union. And this one goes to you, Mr. Taga. Um, obviously, the disintegration, I don't know whether it started under Margaret Thatcher. I don't know my um, English history very well. But obviously, I know for sure that there was disintegration earlier on in which most of the large unions, corporations, 
those who aspire, you know, to come together, aspirational people, to stand against the status quo, were broken. And we see that trend up to this day. So my question is, where do you see union in the next five, ten years, unions as a whole? Going back to where they've come from, how the changes have been affected, broken up, if you like, how do you see the unions in the period between five to ten years from now? Okay, um, Mr. Tyler, um, thanks for that again. Well, just one or two more questions before we close. We basically got like five more minutes, which is um, question number one will be um, this obviously from the statistics showing that there's been a massive drop in union membership. Okay, what will we generally attribute this to? A, would it be because employers do not kind of recognize unions and employees? are not taken to this kindly, you know, in terms of, well, if my employer does not recognize um, unions, there's no need in me um, signing on to a union. Or will it be because of financial reasons, because you have to pay unions and the money is being rising and rising as by inflation? What would you have to say on this, please? Yeah, that's absolutely correct. And this is going to, this is the last word. And um, it's very important that you join a union 
owing to the last words of Mr. Taggart right there, because we as laborers have nothing else older than the union. As laborers, the union will fight your corner for you. So if you are not a member of a union, it's advisable that you join one first thing tomorrow, Monday morning. And on behalf of this channel, we want to say thank you very much, Mr. Taggart, for spending time you know, and explaining to us the legitimacy, the prudence, the necessity, the advantages of joining a union, and the history behind all of this. We want to say thank you very much, sir, and good night. Thank you much, Dave. Bye-bye. Yeah. So, ladies and gentlemen, we've come to the end of this program. It's been a fantastic run. The topic was heated. We had a few callers, and that was great. I want to commend the callers. Um, Mr. Spain, I know that you've come up with um, some things in the, in the chat room. Unfortunately, we've come to the end. But we will always have another day. And for this, I want to commend you and all the others. To the rest of the team, this is your host and presenter, Mr. Prince Emil Kroma, saying good night for now until we come to you next time with hopefully Mr. Kamarimba Mansari. But until then, good night.